Hi everyone, welcome back to my channel. For those who are new here, I briefly tell you my name is Mel, I'm a neuroscientist from Uruguay and on the side of my PhD I'm doing this channel to bring science closer to the people, interviewing cool scientists all over the world. Today we are talking with Dilanta, a scientist from Sri Lanka that is in Germany doing his PhD in molecular biology. He works with some structures called nanobodies. Uh, he will talk a bit about that, but he will also give a lot of cool advice, especially for young scientists, about what other options are there for working uh, as a scientist. Because some people struggle with the decision, am I gonna do academia, gonna, I'm, I am gonna become a professor, or should I go to industry? But actually, these are not the only two options. There's a wide variety of things to do, and he will speak a lot about that. Hi Dilanta, it's very nice to be here talking to you, visiting you, and thank you for giving time for this. Uh, sure, yeah, thank you for having me. How did you discover that you wanted to pursue a career in science and uh, where are you from? I don't know, tell us a bit about the background. I'm originally from Sri Lanka, but uh, I grew up in the Middle East for a while and then moved to Sri Lanka for uh, some, school, some of my school years, so from 12 to 18, um, and then I came to Germany. My interest in science really, I think, was um, a mix of things. I've always been a curious kid, which I think uh, is you know, true for most scientists. Um, but my passion for biology was really driven, I think, mostly by my parents. Like most Asian parents, they really want their kids to be doctors when they grow up. So that was really kind of drilled into me at a young age. Um, and uh, I think that it was a major motivator um, when it came to where I ended up today. And after you discovered your passion, so what did you study for your bachelor's? Well, it's, it's quite an interesting story. So the thing is, um, having moved from the Middle East to Sri Lanka, uh, I found myself not really being able to speak the language there or having troubles with the language. So that meant I had to go to an international school. And in Sri Lanka, oddly enough, if you study international school, it makes it very difficult to then enroll there for further education. So my real only option was to go abroad. With this in mind, I had to keep as many options on the table as possible. So when I did, when I completed high school, I had my foot in several doors. So it was not just medical sciences, it was also engineering um, and, you know, the like. So what happened was basically, for me, it was a question of where do I get the best deal? Where do I get the best offer? Because I need to leave. I need to go somewhere else if I want to further my career. And why did you choose biochemistry and not medicine or other option? So, uh, yeah, I mean, like referring back to what I was talking about, I was raised to be a doctor, medical doctor, right? Um, and unfortunately, um, you know, growing up, we had a lot of financial hardship in my family. And so medical medicine was kind of out of the question because to do medicine abroad is a really expensive endeavor. I had to look at other options. And um, luckily enough, that turned out to be a good thing because I realized, you know, once you're away from your family and from your parents, you realize what you really want to do. And it was not, uh, it was not medicine for me. So um, I kind of dodged a bullet there, I think. Um, however, uh, when it came to deciding um, to do, uh, you know, biological sciences, um, and in, in, in my case, uh, my bachelor's was in biochemistry and cell biology, it really came down to the university, which was um, Jakobs University in Bremen. It's in North Germany. Germany and Europe in particular was a great option for me. It was a completely international campus. Uh, all the courses were in English and um, it was definitely one of the best times of my life and I really think it was a good option. Sounds like a great experience and what did you do next? You think that you're you know all grown up and you're an adult and you're making like you know great decisions for your life but what you realize is um, your field of vision is still really narrow and that's because um, especially if you're in a program like I was you're surrounded by people who are doing exactly the same thing you are and all your professors are telling you you know exactly what they did and so all you really hear is oh since you started in science you need to continue in science and specifically in academia and following this i was like okay well my next logical step would be to continue to a master's in a similar program in the life sciences and um, so that's exactly what i did and i was fortunate enough to be accepted into the international max Planck research school here 
Um, so uh, yeah, and that was then the next logical step and that and it being an integrated PhD program meant, okay, well, it looks like the next four or five years of my life seemed to be planned out. And during this time, did you consolidate your interest for academia or did you discover some other passions? So I think that um, when you're in the academic sciences, you will often hear that you have two options with your degree. One being continue in academia or the other being go into scientific industry. But what you learn is, you know, with um, how much science has been modernized and how much we actually learn, this limitation is actually, you know, it's false. It's, it's an absolute lie. You can really do whatever you want after you are, you know, done with your PhD or even your master's. At no point in your life are you really like limited to just a few options. And what I mean by that is take your PhD. What's important in your PhD is not really the content. It's not what you learn. It's not which proteins or, you know, techniques, you know, it's really about, you know, the other softer skills, you know, how to present, how to, um, you know, do research, uh, how to approach a problem by applying the scientific method, you know, which comes down to critical thinking. And this means that you can really solve a lot of different problems, not just bio biological problems or scientific problems, but even social problems or economic problems. Um, so with your PhD, it, you can really open up a lot of different avenues. It's up to you to really be like, you know, bang on that door and break it down. Um, and you see that a lot of uh, a lot more people from um, you know our back our background going into numerous different fields. You know this is a really good point because a lot of students they have this struggle that they don't know other options from these two. Could you give us some examples? Yeah, I mean there's a lot of options available, and uh, I think that if you talk to numerous people, some of the most po more popular options uh, include consulting, and this is a really yeah diverse field to go into when you say consulting and you come from this a scientific background people often assume okay then you're going to be consulting you know uh, within the scientific industry but again that's not true because with consulting you can still you still have options to you know l to sample other fields um, and I think that you know if you really are true to those skills you picked up doing your PhD, um, you know, like I mentioned, you know, how to do research and how to, you know, really look at um, a problem and look at, you know, the data uh, in an unbiased fashion and come up with new solutions. This approach, it's, it's really a applicable to a lot of different fields. So consulting is, for example, one field, but I also know people who went on to, you know, make their own, you know, come up with their own startups. And those are not necessarily scientific startups, but they identified a problem out there in society and, you know, thought about, you know, an elegant solution, an efficient solution. And then they take their skill set in presenting research and they go and present to investors. Um, and, you know, when you're out there and you're, you know, you're an investor, it's really appealing when somebody with, uh, you know, a solid background comes to you and, you know, really shows you the data, is able to explain it in a way that, you know, you can understand and then, you know, lead that up to, you know, a pipeline, a scheme. They have a, a plan set up and ready to go. Those are really good points. Then, in your opinion, what do you think you should consider when you think about what to do? When it comes to, you know, deciding on a career path, what the most, the most important thing, I think, um, in my opinion, is really finding something that you like to do, that you love to do, because um, you don't want to be stuck in a job day in, day out, doing something that is so monotonous and something that you really, you know, don't want to do and you're living for the weekend. What you want to do is, you know, find something that you like and find something that you're that you have a unique skill set for. Yeah, that's true. And could you tell us also, what, what did you do in your PhD? So I think the main focus of uh, what um, I'm doing in the lab is actually uh, using these little 
protein molecules called nanobodies um, to basically image different structures in the cell. So the cell is made of made of you know a bunch of building blocks that you know build and you know into little structures, and all these structures have very unique functions, uh, and they all somehow work together in a complex you know way to yeah bring about life. So what I do is basically I use these little nanobodies to go and you know hook on to these structures and then they because the nanobodies themselves are fluorescently tagged I can then image these structures using microscopy. And what is the difference between nanobodies and antibodies? That is something that more people know what it is. Something that's really cool about nanobodies, uh, as opposed to um, you know their bigger sister, the antibodies, is that when you use antibodies for biomedical research, a lot of the times these antibodies come from sacrificed animals, such as rats, mice, uh, hamsters, rabbits, and um, you know this is this is uh, an issue that we really bring up time and time again in science: the need to sacrifice animals to further um, re medical research. So camelids and sharks, uh, the structure of their antibodies is different to um, most other animals. So what we do is we take these antibodies from the camelids, in this case the alpaca, and we snip the little part that's actually needed to bind to a target. And this is then what we call an antibody. And we, we can then mass produce this in uh, bacterial cells. So we are getting closer to the end of the interview. I wanted to ask you, if you do you have something to add? If I, if I could say anything to you know, my fellow scientists, especially PhD students, um, when it comes to this issue of you know, why aren't we really out there, why aren't we kind of you know, influencers, why aren't we out on social media, why don't you hear from PhD students more about the whole COVID situation? Um, unfortunately, we are in these little bubbles and these bubbles are full of scientists. And uh, because of that reason, we feel very insecure about coming out and saying you know, what's on our mind or sharing our opinion. It's strange, but we don't consider ourselves experts, even though um, you know, in comparison to the average person, of course, they would want to hear from us. But because we're always surrounded by people who we consider are you know, yeah, either intellectual superiors or our peers, we don't really put ourselves out there because we're so afraid of criticism. It's really cool that you mention all these things because I feel like scientists should be talking about this more often, you know? We should be discussing these things and communicating and trying to find solutions. Also, I would like to ask you, do you have any specific advice for young students that maybe they are watching us right now? It's really interesting, but you know, having grown up in a in a very mixed bag when it comes to you know where I'm from and which environments I studied in, uh, I would say you know take some time to figure out what you like and what drives you. What are your hobbies? And acknowledge that you are yourself an individual, and you are not you are not basically um, a product you're not only a product of the expectations that are laid out in front of you by your family, by, your society, by the society around you. Um, I found that that was something I really had to grow out of. And I think a lot of young people should take the time to really explore their own individuality and who, find out who they are when they decide to you know, step out there into the rest of the world. Um, and I think parents should also maybe dial down on, you know, the extra classes, the piano lessons and, uh, you know, this recipe uh, for success. Because what you learn growing up is, especially after you're done with high school, uh, what your grades, for example, matter less and less. What really matters is the person that you are and how you can convey to the, um, the people around you, uh, how you can convey your own personality and how you know, how that sets you apart from other people. Um, I think that that really comes and, you know, that really comes into play the older, the older you get. Yeah, that's actually great advice. And those were all the questions I have for today. So thank you very much, Dilanta, for giving time for this. It was really nice listening to you. Yeah, and uh, thank you for giving me the opportunity. I'd like to, you know, wish everyone who's in the same boat as me best of luck. I'll see you on the other side.
Yes, and thank you for your attention. If you like the video, I invite you to subscribe to the channel and to give it thumbs up. It really helps the project to grow and also to leave a comment suggesting topics that you would like to see in the future in this channel. And see you in the next video. Bye bye. Thank you.